Hi. So in this video, I want to take a look at the default dict class, which is in the standard libraries collections module. And I'll show you a practical application of default dict as well. But that's really an interesting class. So the first thing is let's go ahead and import it. So from collections, we're going to import default dict. So with this class, we essentially create dictionaries that can auto insert non-existent keys when we try and access a key. So the default value is calculated by calling a callable or if you want a factory function that we define when we create the default dict instance. So we can use any callable. It could be a lambda function, it could be a regular function, or it could be built-in callables. For example, int is actually a callable in Python. And if you call int, you get the default zero integer. So we can use int, not the call, but the actual you know, function itself, the callable itself. We can use that as a factory function for a default dict. And then the default value for a non-existent key will be zero. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So we're going to create default dict and we're going to pass the callable int like so. So now if we try and access a key that doesn't exist in it, it will use a default. The default is going to be zero because that's what the result is of calling int. But a default dict is also just a regular dictionary. So you can go ahead and set keys if you want. We can do this. And then if we look at the dictionary, it's got that key in it and we can delete elements, etc. So it works just like a plain dictionary. But in addition, we can do this. Let's say we ask for the key B in this default dict. That key doesn't exist, right? B is not in this dictionary. But watch what happens. We get a value back and we get this default value. But not only did we get the value back, if we look at the dictionary again, you can see that it's actually been inserted in the dictionary as well. And this is very different from the get method. Right. If we do a regular dictionary where we do, let's say, a and test, then we can say d dot get b and then we can specify a default. We can say, well, if b doesn't exist, then return zero. So we get zero back, if which you see is kind of very similar to this. What's not similar is that the dictionary was not mutated. We didn't actually insert that key into the dictionary. Now the default dict is essentially a subclass of a regular dictionary. We saw we can just access it like a normal dictionary. And in fact, we can take this default dict and turn it into a dictionary simply by calling the dict function on it. So essentially we're just casting our default dict back to a regular dictionary here. Now one particularly useful application of the default dict is when we are building up a dictionary and we would like to avoid writing logic with if statements saying, well, if the keys in the dictionary, then do this, otherwise do that. Let's take a look at a very, very simple example first. So let's go ahead and import the random library. And here in this example, I'm going to want to count things. So maybe the frequency distribution of numbers in a list. So let's go ahead and create our dictionary, which is going to be empty initially. That's going to contain our results. I'm going to set the seed so that we have repeatable results. And then I'm going to create a data structure, a list, a data list, which is going to be random numbers, random integers, one and five. And we'll do this, let's say for a thousand or let's say 10,000 numbers, like so. So data contains 10,000 random integers between one and five. Now let's go ahead and populate this dictionary D to return the number of times each of those integers occurs in that list. So for that, we could use a simple loop. We can say for number in data, and then we're going to say if the number is in D, so if it's already in D, then we're going to increment whatever the number is currently by one. If it's not in D, this means this is the first time we're hitting that number, then we're just going to set the count equal to one. Okay, like so. So once we do that, we now have this dictionary that's been populated. So you can see four occurred 2001 times, one occurred 2006 times, and so on. 
So using default dict, we can simplify this logic. What we're going to do is we're going to say dd equals default dict. And I could just pass int zero or int because I want to get zero as a default. But just to show you that it doesn't have to be a function like that, it could be even a lambda function. So I'm going to just create a lambda here that takes no arguments. So the function cannot take an argument. That's the only kind of rule here. And it's going to return something. In this case, I want to set the default to zero. So I'm going to return zero. So I could have done that using int, but I just want to show you that I can do it this way as well. And let me spell lambda correctly. And now I can recreate this dictionary. I can say for number in data, and I can say dd number plus equals one. Now, why can I write the things this way? Well, remember the default, if number doesn't exist in my default dict, what is it going to be? It's going to be inserted with a zero. So by the time I then access it, or I then increment it, that key exists in the dictionary with a value of zero. And if it does exist, it will take the existing one. Otherwise, it creates a new one with a value of zero, and I need to, in both cases, increment by one. And so now if we look at the result for DD, you can see we have the same result. We did the same thing. Now, as a side note, there is a much easier way to do this, which is to use the counter class in the same collections module. And I'll just show you here very quickly how you do it. So to actually do what we just did in this example, I would personally use this counter because all we need to do is to say counter data. And it does exactly the same thing. It basically counts the number of keys, you know, that occur in the in that list, in that iterable. So I would use that, but I wanted to have a very simple example for default dict to start off with. So let's look at a slightly less trivial example. Suppose you've got a data set, which is basically a list that contains orders that need to be processed for a variety of clients. And what we want to do is we want to generate a new data model that is going to be a dictionary whose keys are the clients and where the associated values is going to be a list of the orders for that client. So let's go ahead and build the data up. So first of all, from UUID, I'm going to import UUID4. I'm going to want to generate some unique identifiers. Again, I'm going to reset my seed to zero just to get uh, repeatable results. Then I'm going to create a suppliers list. Let's say AAA, BBB, let's say CCC, DDD, and EEE. So these are my suppliers. And then I've got a bunch of clients. And this is just because I'm going to generate some test data. So we'll take the clients to be ZZZ and YYY and XXX. And let's do one more WWW. W. Okay, and we want three X's, three Z's, three Y's. Okay, just to keep it consistent. And then my orders, therefore, I'm going to build up this way. It's going to be a list of dictionaries. And I'm going to repeat this, let's say, a hundred times. So I'm going to basically create a list of length 100, and each item is going to be an order. So I'm going to specify here the supplier, and I'm going to take a random choice from the suppliers, like so. Then I'm going to generate the client for this particular order. And again, I'm just going to do a random choice, and we'll take a random choice from clients. Then we're going to generate an order number. I want that to be unique, and hence why I imported UUID 4, like so. Then we're going to say that we have an item ID as well. And for the item ID, I'm again going to use a unique identifier. So I'll use a UUID 4 again. And then for the quantity that was ordered, um, let's go ahead and use a random integer. And then we'll say random.rand int, let's say between 1 and 100. Okay. So these are our orders. We have 100 of them. If we look at the length of orders, it should be 100, if I can type right. And then if we look at the first orders, or the first order from orders, 
then you can see we've got a supply, we've got a client, we've got an order number, an item ID, and a certain quantity. So now I want to reshape this list into a dictionary with the keys corresponding to the client and the corresponding values are lists of the orders for each client key. So let's do this using a standard dictionary approach first. So let's go ahead and create this client orders dictionary. And then we're just going to loop basically through every order. And we're going to pick out, and I'm, I'm kind of breaking it up this way so it's a little easier to understand the logic. But I'm going to grab the client from the dictionary, right? So I'm going to grab this value basically over here. Then I'm going to check, I'm going to say if client is in client orders, I'm going to do something. Otherwise, I'm going to do something else. What's the something else? Well, the key doesn't exist. So I'm basically going to go ahead and say that, let me make sure I get my indentation right. So client orders. So I'm going to create the key here, right? And I'm going to make the key the client. And that's going to be equal to a list because I want this to be a list and it's going to contain just one order at this point. That's the first order. If the key already exists in the dictionary, this means that my existing key already has a list for the corresponding value. So all I need to do here is to say client orders And then we'll again get the actual client. So now that's going to return that existing list and I'm going to append to the list. I'm going to append the order like so. Okay, so this is what our logic looks like. If we take a look at now what client orders is, you'll see that it's basically a dictionary where we have the client as a key and then we have every order for that particular client in a list right in this list over here so the only thing that's ugly here really is just this if statement right if it's this then do this then do that and this is where default dict is really handy because we don't have to go through that rigmarole so now let's use the default dict so what do i want as my default value in the default dict when i access a key that doesn't exist well, I just want an empty list. This way, when I access a key in the dictionary, I'm going to be guaranteed that it's either going to be an empty list because it didn't exist before, or it's going to be a list because it did exist before and I'm building lists up. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's call it client orders DD for default dict. And we could use the we could use a lambda, right? We could say lambda and then just return an empty list. That would be our factory function. But of course, we can just use the list function as well, since a list, let's go ahead and take a look at that quickly. If I do list, that just returns an empty list. So that's exactly what I want. So now we have that. And again, we're just going to loop. So for order in orders, and we're going to say client order default dict. Now I'm going to access the client, right? So just like I did before, I could break it up this way. I could say client equals order client, right? I'm going to get the client from that dictionary. That's my client. And then I could say that the default order for that client, so client is the key, append. I don't have to do an if statement here. I'm guaranteed it's going to be either an empty list if it's the first time I hit this client or it's going to be an existing list if it's not. And I'm going to append what? I'm just going to append the order like so. And that's it. That's all we have to do. If we look at client orders DD, you'll see that essentially we have the same structure. And in fact, we should be able to check that client orders is equal to client orders default dictionary. And that turns out to be true. So there you go. That's default dict. It allows you to basically simplify your code a little bit where you do not have to have these branches. Now here they were pretty trivial. Sometimes they get a little bit more complex, but not really. I mean, it's usually just that, right? Instead of having two branches, having a conditional essentially based on whether the key exists or not, you're able to use this default dict to get around that problem in many instances. Now, one thing to note is that default dict it's not a real dict, right? It's, it's a subclass of dict. If we take a look at that, we can see if we test is 
subclass, so is subclass, and let's say uh, we take a look at default dict of dict, that is true, right? So default dict is a subclass of dictionary, but it is slower. So, you know, if you have code that's gonna be very sensitive here because you're dealing maybe with large dictionaries or you're dealing with large amounts of data, you may wanna be careful with default dict. But in this case, it's small enough, and in many cases, it really is. And I would rather have the clarity of the code rather than, you know, gaining a few microseconds here and there in an application that may be taking much longer to run comparatively. So up to you whether this is going to work for you or not. But here you go, default dict. Thanks for watching.